Hey, DJ. Brian Stoltz, uh, Auburn Rivals. Uh, your players have been talking about loafs, about getting penalized for not celebrating after turnovers, interceptions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what, where did that idea come from? Ooh, that's, that's a good question. I, I, I probably don't remember the origin of it. I think, you know, as coaches, we all take bits and pieces from those we've been around and, and, and coached with. But, um, it, it, I mean, it's been that way for a while. I just really believe in that as, as a coach. I think, you know, as a staff, we all do of, um, you know, on defense, it starts with, with effort. You, you, you got to get, get hats to the ball. And, you know, effort can make up for a lot of things. It's never going to be perfect. So someone misses a tackle, it's not as big of a miss if there's guys running the ball that are right there. You know, someone, you know, missing an assignment out of their gap. Again, if, there, if there's guys flying to the ball, those mistakes don't show up quite as big. Hey, DJ. Um, Hughes talked about the way that you coach defense, and he said it reminds him a lot of some of the better offensive minds he's been around in terms of just the multiplicity of your defense and, and your ability to, to kind of boil it down and communicate it well. Would you agree that, that you know, you maybe have notes of, of I guess, some, some better offensive minds in the way that you try to, you know, coach your defense? And then I guess just in terms of the multiplicity and the communicativeness, just what, what would you attribute that to? I just think in, in, the, in the game nowadays, it's, you, you've got to be multiple because of the types of offenses we're facing and the way the tempo is going, meaning, you know, most teams don't huddle anymore. They line up. They want to see what you're in, and then, and then the coordinator is making a call. I think that will probably be even more prevalent now with the earpiece where they're going to see what you're in and then you'll be telling the quarterback what they want to do with it. And so, to me, you've got to present multiple looks. At the same time, you – there's got to be a, a, a way to kind of streamline that and, and communicate well with your players because if you're too multiple and you're making mistakes out there, I, I think on defense that shows up a lot more. I mean, mistakes turn into to big plays and, and, and possibly touchdowns. And so, you know, we've worked really hard to, to find a way to be multiple, show, show multiple looks, but also, you know, create, we, we say same as, create same as for our players, meaning, you know, this call is the same as this. So if it's a couple different things that are the same as for a guy, I think he can handle that. He, he's just memorizing what the call is, but those are the same techniques you're asking him to do. And you can present different looks for the offense. DJ, in your experience, what does it take for a true freshman to be able to play in your defense early? I know you've got some guys that, that, that maybe have the ability right away, but, you know, uh, just, just kind of what sets, sets those guys apart. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look back, we've had true freshmen play at different spots, various spots, just about everywhere we've been. I, I don't, I would never limit a guy to say, well, he's he's a freshman, and that that'd be the reason why he he, you know, could or couldn't do something. But I, I think, okay, so generally for a true freshman, he's got to have the opportunity. He's got he's got to be at a position where, you know, there's some sort of opening or, or guys are competing for that spot. And I think the other thing is. The, usually a lot of times lies with their mental maturity. They're, 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 it's the handling of, of so many different things. When, you know, you're at college the first time, you're starting classes, you're, there's all the other things away from home that are different. And the guys that are mentally mature enough to handle that kind of, with, with, you know, um, time management and those sorts of things, I think then they can handle on the field better. You know, some guys are talented enough and you know it can help you, but their, their life is such a mess. It's like you're trying to get that all in line before, because you don't know what, what you're going to get from them when they're on the field. And I think oftentimes like, everyone obviously looks at what's on the field, but sometimes it's, it's what's off the field that's, that's trickling in. Coach, uh, the pass rush is vital. What, what can you say about who could be the key contributors this year providing a, a, a pass rush for Robert? Yeah, I, I've been pleased with our guys throughout uh, training camp um, in, in being able to generate a pass rush with, with four, sometimes even three. Um, I, I think those guys up front, you know, I mean, J Mac and, and Keldrick for sure are guys that, that, that everyone you know here knows and have, have played and they, they've had really good off seasons, really good training camps. You know I think um, you know Keyron coming in it really helps us. I, I think you know he he's done a great job and he, he's a guy that can that can win one on one. Um, and you know I, I, a lot of those young guys too, Amaris and and and, and um, you know Jamonte, those guys are all guys that when you get them one on one situations. Have been very, been effective, and and we're gonna, we're going to need them to be. I think anytime you can create a pass rush, affect a quarterback, and, and you know get them off the spot with not having to pressure all the time to do that, it's very helpful for the defense. And so we're going to count on those guys and have different packages where they line up in different places to be able to do that. 
on the back end, you were talking about uh, liking to play as many players as you can. Um, who do you feel comfortable with now in the secondary as your week and a half out? Yeah, it's um, we are. We're still working very hard to create that that depth um, with those guys, both outside of the corner spots as well as inside. And I think when I say depth too, it's it's position multiplicity too. Like you know, to be able to to be in a nickel package or a dime package and have those guys you know learn more than one spot and be be able to bounce around. And so um, you know, Coach Kelly, Coach Crime, th those guys do a great job with them in the back end. Um, we, we are going to play multiple guys back there. We, we feel we have enough enough talent to do that back there. And so, you know, for us, then it, it's honing in on, on what, what guys, you know, what each guy can handle. You know, sometimes physically they can handle doing multiple things, but it's okay mentally, are we putting too much on this guy to learn more than one spot? Th those are the things right now that we're, we're kind of fine-tuning and going through as we approach a game week to say, okay, now we get into a game plan and, it, and it's really detailed and narrowed down as, as to what we're doing. What, what can this guy handle and learn? You mentioned Amaris and Jamonte. Freeze has mentioned previously that he's not sure how useful a redshirt is nowadays, especially with talented freshmen like that. Is that sort of a helpful component for you? Have you, as a coaching staff, maybe talked about, you don't need to worry about that if they can help you five or six plays, just get them in the game. I'm interested to kind of know your perspective on that. Yeah, you know, honestly, it's not a, a, like a, a real conversation we, we've had to this point of redshirting. To me, it's like any guy that can help us and, and can play, like, we need to utilize them. I mean, that's in all three phases of the game, right? Offense, defense, special teams. And, you know, certainly there's a, a long list of ways the landscape of college football has changed in terms of, you know, all the things we can go into. So that being one of them as well. You know, what, what, what does that really look like in terms of a guy redshirting? And so, um, you know, I think usually we make those decisions later in the year. And may, maybe you get the game after game four, if a guy's played or not, what, what we're doing, and, and have those conversations. But we want all of our guys – preparing to play and help the team and anyone that, that can do that, we're, we're certainly going to utilize. DJ, you've obviously been through this league a few times. Uh, how, how, if you could just talk about the challenge of, of the, the offensive coordinators you go up against in addition to the players, obviously, but the offensive coordinators and, and how you prepare differently for different guys. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, listen, I, I think th th this conference is the best football in the country. And so it attracts the best players, I feel, in recruiting. If, for, for the most part, you're recruiting the, the, the top-level players. And I think it's the same for coaches. You, you, you're you're going to get the top-level coaches that want to, you know, every, everyone that's a competitor, whatever field you're involved in, you want to you compete at the highest level. And so, I mean, we have that. I think, I think yeah, there, there's, there's, you know, talented coordinators and, you know, week in and week out, th those challenges are different as to what you face. But, but obviously, all, all these guys are, you know, um, very good at what they do, and they present issues for us. And I think, again, the, the way the game's going, the communication of, I think, presents some issues on the defense as well. And those, those are all things that we're, you know, continuing to work through. But it, it's, a, it's a great challenge. It's something, something we embrace every week. Uh, Coach, question about the helmet communication. Have you guys kind of nailed down who are going to kind of be the players, um, you know, w with the units and their helmets? And have you guys experienced any kinks? Or, I mean, just how's that experiment or the newness going on that front? Yeah, we have. The the, the kinks are they, they they told me sometimes I'm too I'm too loud in their ear, so I I got I got I got to work on that. You know, there, there's a couple ways of saying the same thing. It may sound differently, but uh, we're, yeah, we're. I don't know how much that on the defensive side that it really changes things. I, I think it probably, it does assist and maybe helps a little bit with, with communication, but um, we can't totally go to that's our communication to the players on the field. Just again, most teams don't huddle. We can't huddle. Um, so I think we're different from the program from that aspect. Um, but we have, we've been working on that since really back in spring and, and kind of, I, I feel like worked out a lot of the, a lot of the, the kinks in it. Um, and kind of how we want to do it. And so, you know, some of that may change as we get in the season maybe, but, but we've worked on it a bunch. Hey, DJ. Coach Freeze mentioned Demarcus Riddick as a freshman who, you know, he said probably isn't getting talked about enough. What have you seen from him, and, you know, how do you think he can contribute this season? Yeah, Demarcus, he's a unique skill set. For, for his size and length and ability to, to run and move is, is pretty dynamic. Um, you know, he, he, he played a different position in, in high school than what he's playing right now. Um, 
but I think that that lends to his ability to, you know, play multiple spots. He, he, he looks really good out in open, open field, open space, um, but he, he also looks good in the box because he has good length. He's a physical player. And I, I just think, you know, he's just scratching the surface because obviously every rep he gets is something where he's at is, is probably a new one for him, you know. And so you just see him get better and, and learn every day out there. So he's definitely a guy that, that, that can and will contribute and help us as a freshman. All right, guys. Thank you.